Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully, and today we're going to be working on SEO for retails, online retail stores, and I have a lot of Etsy peeps. This is not for Etsy. This is if, say, you have a Shopify, a WooCommerce, something like that. And today we're going to be using the Copper Centaur Studios for um, the example. This is one of the guys in my Facebook group for e-commerce people, Charles. Let us use his stuff and let me use his at him as my guinea pig. So the first thing we're going to talk about is um, which products you should target. And I have a little list of things I want to tell you. And there's a blog post that goes along with this. And I will put a link to that here. But first off, which products? Let's think about the 80-20 rule that's normal for everything. So you want to pick your top 10 products, maybe your top 20 products. And then you want to pick something that is... Um, expensive right you don't want to be doing all this work for something that sells for three dollars if you don't have something that's higher price then pick something that's in a uh, a bundle or a package something like that so and expensive is going to depend on who you are some people's expensive might be three thousand dollars some people's expensive might be fifty dollars it doesn't matter just try to make sure it's going to doing this work is going to be worth your time now, I want to talk to you for one wee minute about Google because we're talking about SEO keywords and that's Google right now. It may be something else later. But the way that Google picks a ranking, so we're going to be talking a lot about knitting. Um, and I'm going to show you a whole bunch of stuff because that's what Charles's store is about. But let's talk about um, yarn for arm knitting, right? So these are keywords. As we do this, we're going to see that yarn for arm knitting is a keyword. Yarn for arm knitting blanket is a keyword. Yarn for arm crochet. Okay, so those are all keywords that we're going to be looking at. And the way that Google ranks websites to pick which ones show up here is how many is some SEO, okay, meaning you've done a lot of good keywords on your website, but then it's going to be how many times you have that. Now that we see now that arm knitting is chunky acrylic, chunky, chunky acrylic, um, things like that. We're going to be talking about some of the plugins that I use that are going to help us find some of those keywords. But that's how Google ranks sites is a combination of the keywords that you use on your product listings or on your blog posts and also how many links you'll get to those pages, okay? And the last thing I wanna show you real quick is how to make a link. So when I say make a link, if I was gonna say best knitting needles, I would highlight best knitting needles, I would click this, I would post a URL, so we have knitting needles. Say we were gonna make this our best knitting needle page. You put that in, you're gonna say open in a new tab, or you're gonna say normally, and that makes a link. And so what happens is you would click through that link to the page. And when you use the keywords like this, best knitting needle, then Google associates those keywords now with Charles's page about some random needles. Clover interchangeable circular knitting needles. So let's make this best circular knitting needles. Okay. All right, so I would do it that way. Now, I'm going to break this because this is not the right place, but that's what I mean by making a link. Okay, now let's talk about your store and how it works. And we want to pick two or three hubs, okay? So a hub meaning that we're going to have certain things that we always use our keywords to point to. And I'll give you an example from my marketing art fleet. I have Etsy marketing, right? Not e-commerce marketing, but Etsy marketing. So almost any time I, I talk about Etsy marketing, I will link to my category page. So here are Charles's product categories. He has beads, he has Bobby Bothy threads, he has crafts. So Say crochet cotton would be one of his um, main ones. Now, I'm hoping that he has the ability to add content, meaning add words 
about crochet cotton to his category page. I know that I have that in my Shopify store. Right, I can, I'm going to pause you here while I log in. Okay, so in here they call them collections in Shopify. So in this time management collection, see how I have a, a, the option to put a description? A lot of times we just pass over that as e-commerce sellers, but you would be putting your description in here. Sometimes your shop may not have that, and then you have to do an app or something like that. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying, I would, tr I would love Charles to put a nice juicy description about crochet cotton after he does his keyword research. And do not worry, I am going to be showing you how to do keyword research. Okay. But so you're going to pick two to three hubs to start with. So for this example, I actually picked for him. Uh, crochet cotton, uh, cross stitch somethings, and knitting needles, okay? Because he seems like he has a lot of knitting needles. So the examples that I'm going to use right now are knitting needles. Um, so pick two or three hubs. You can pick, if you have a great product, pick your product. I remember um, I was working with a shop one time, and they sold this, like, cloud lamp, and they sold thousands of this cloud lamp. Now, I would do a lot of keyword linking to that cloud lamp because it was such a strong product for them. For Charles, it could be to this category like knitting needles, okay? So now that we have picked two or three hubs, we want to start internally linking. And what does that mean? So see how in this one product, we're in a clover bamboo interchangeable, so you know, right? Like the blah, blah, blah. He has knitting needles, right? So remember I showed you how to make a link? Well, if I was in the admin area of this site, I would, he has tags to knitting needles, but I would take this keyword, I would highlight it, and I would link it to that category page or the collection page, however your shop talks about it. And what happens when you do that is, say Google crawls this page, right? They send their Google crawler out, and they're like, oh, he has the same knitting needle thing that everybody else has. And then it gets to these knitting needles, and they're like, oh, this guy said knitting needles are important to his shop. Let's follow that to his knitting needles page. And if he has lots of good information and keywords that Google recognizes as being about knitting needles, it will go beautifully for Charles. Okay, now let's talk about how we can find some keywords, okay? We are going to add two, they're called extensions, and I have them in um, the blog post, but they're called Extract, I know this is a ridiculous name for an extension, but Extract People Also Search Phrases in Google and then Keywords Everywhere. And I believe Keywords Everywhere costs a tiny bit of money, like five or $10. But make sure you pay it because it's super worth it. You know I never tell you to buy anything that you don't need. What will happen when you have those plugins on your Google is once, so I did, I took these keywords, do, 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 circular knitting needles tips, right? Okay, and I did a search. And now with those plugins, I could find long tail keywords. I could click that, but I get all kinds of keywords to use. Are circular knit, knitting needles easy to use? How do circle needles look? Regular plain old circular needles. Um, size chart. So Charles could add a knitting needle size chart to his description of that product. Um, I would probably add that to my category page. Like, remember, I want my little products to be better with that link to the knitting needles, but then I would have that amazing knitting needle category description page that Google could find in their description. All right, now let's talk about just this. this. So something about 
writing better descriptions. So I don't want you to have to write a blog post about your products. But Charles could say circular knitting needles, right? That would be a better keyword for this product. He could say, bet. okay, so one of the things we found was best knitting needles over here, best metal knitting needles. So he could do best wooden knitting needles. He could say lace tip knitting needles. Right, so he could have a list of knitting needle keywords that he could include in this description, right? Um, so he could have a bunch of those keywords in here, and by a bunch, I mean three or four. And you just want to use them as if you were writing a product description, but you're cheating a little bit because you know Google likes these keywords already, right? and you're including them. Oh, see, circular knitting needle size 50. I wonder if Charles has that. Now, this is where being a product seller makes a difference. This is eight millimeter, right? But a lot of times this could be, see this says number 11. This could be, and I'm thinking of paper sizes because you can say A4 paper size, and blah, 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 but if you don't have letter size, standard size, things like that, there's a lot of things that knowledge you have of a, as a product seller that you could include in your descriptions that would help you get found in Google search as you're writing them. All right, now we're gonna do some advanced stuff. And I am using a tool called SEMrush, and it's expensive, it's $100 a month, but it has a $7, um, excuse me, it has a seven day free trial. So you could do all your research. The difference for product sellers and bloggers is I may write about all different things, but as product sellers, if Charles did his research for knitting needles, cross stitch, things like that, he could do the research now and have keywords to use for the next six months, a year until he launches a new product. And it would be totally worth it to pay for this if you had a new product. Okay, so now what I did was I put Joanne Fabric in here, okay? Because we're thinking about knitting needles. You would want to put a site that has your kind of stuff. Say you sell jewelry. You would want to put K jewelry in, or you would want to put, Pandora, if you're doing bracelets or something like that. And the reason is because they have lots of keywords. They have almost 700,000 keywords. We need a site that has lots of keywords so we can sort them. And then what I did was I said, I want Joanne to be in, in a low position, right? 51 to 100, that's not a great position. I'm not trying to compete with Joann's. I want to find keywords that are going to be easy for my shop to rank for. All right, and then we have knitting. I put knitting in. I put knitting needles in first, but it kind of confused it. And then the volume is 100 to 1,000. So that means that there are only 100 to 1,000 searches a month. Now, why am I trying to find low volume keywords. We could say, say, I want to clear that and I want only ones that get, hold on, it's thinking, it's mad at me now. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Uh, say, I only want ones that get 10,000 to 100,000 searches a month. Well, the problem with that is that Joann's is trying for that and they only have one keyword ranking for that term, knitting stitches. So that that is so competitive that you are not going to outrank the, um, the bloggers and the people who are spending all their time doing this. These, this, this blog post and this video is to help real e-commerce shop sellers to figure things out, not to try to become a blogger and rank on Google for everything. So now here's a cool thing. I found best, um, so this is where I found out about the um, arm knitting. 
Uh, there's a knitting chart maker, thick art yard for arm knitting. So these are all things that you could put in your product description and be able to rank for because they have really low search volume. So nobody's really looking for, you know, four, 500 people a month is going to make a huge difference to you. It isn't going to make a huge difference for uh, Joanne, straight knitting needles. How cool is that? But we can even go down to where the search volume is even below this and find, and these are called non-competitive keywords, right? So bloggers are looking, I will only look for a keyword that's like a thousand to five thousand a month. I wouldn't do this for like 90, um, something like that. But but you could rank for them super easy. So stretch knitting yarn, right? You could rank for that super easy for one of your products. And the thing is that all the little boats rise. Say you get your knitting uh, needles category page to rank number 65 in Google. Well, your other pages are going to start increasing too. Now your category page may never get really popular, but your other pages are going to increase in ranking because Google will start noticing your site and knowing you're doing that. And this is the doing competition for low competition keywords. Last but not least, and this is going to freak some of you out and you don't have to do this, but Charles writes blog posts, okay? And his blog posts are terrible. So July 2020, he wrote a blog post about Krynik thread width, sizes, and diameters. And this is factually correct, I'm sure, but let's see what happens if we said Krynik thread, I haven't done this yet, I did all the rest of them before, but let's do a search in here for, I wonder what would happen if we don't do thread. Let's try that. Okay, Kranich metallic ribbon. Okay, let's take out all of the volumes because this might be a very strange. Okay, Kranich braid, reflective thread, 25 meters. That would be, let's see if he has that, right? Does he have reflective thread? He has fluorescence. But he would want to write a little bit about that, right? He would want to maybe make a synopsis above each one of these, like um, Kranich Silk Mori Thread is great for using in arm knitting. It doesn't sound like that's right, but you will know your, um, you will know your industry and because these are such specific keyword search terms, Charles would definitely have a chance of ranking for these search terms because nobody else is doing this extra little bit of work on their e-commerce shop. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, leave them below. I answer all my questions. If you like this, make sure you thumbs up it and subscribe to my channel, Tara Jacobson. Marketing Artfully.